All right, in this video today, I'm going to be talking about depth of field cameras and how to set up your own uh, camera so that you have easy controls on depth of field. So here's an example of what we're going to be doing. So I've created a little character here with a lot of texture on the surface so that we can see changes in depth. So if you like macro photography where you're able to get really close to something with your camera and blur out the other elements within your scene, if you notice in a lot of um, computer graphics the camera is, has an infinite focus on it, meaning you can focus on the thing close to you and that something uh, 10 miles away will still be in perfect focus. But to add that sense of realism you want to be able to have uh, the focus region or the focal point or the target that you're trying to shoot to be in focus and everything else out of focus. So for instance, I have this little character here. It's essentially a square and I'm focusing here on the corner of this and everything else is out of focus so I can get depth. But as I move the focal point of my camera, you can see that I, my target is moving, the focal point of the camera is here, and this has become out of focus. This has become out of focus, and this is becoming near focus as I move. You can look at this clarity of this, uh, of the focal point as it moves. Now it's down at this antenna, and then it can move all the way down to the back edge of the object while this remains uh, out of focus. So I have the ability to control that sense or that depth of field. I can even move it very easily to the back wall. So the back wall is now in focus and these things up front are out of focus and I can move it wherever I want. So essentially what I'm making, what I have made is a simple control on a camera like so. Here's my camera. Uh, when I select my oops, when I select my camera, I have connected to it a low, uh, a measuring tool. The measuring tool gives me the ability to select a locator, and as I move this locator, or if I move the camera itself, it's constantly measuring the distance between these two points. That that distance is the focal distance as a focus distance from the camera to the target what I want to focus on so this information has to be fed into the attributes of of your camera the focus distance so what I'm actually going to be doing is setting up a, a parent constraint to constrain my start target object my my, my measuring start locator. It's going to be parented to my camera. The end target isn't parented because I want to be able to move it wherever I want. The distance attribute, the actual node that's that's actually uh, calculating distance is going to drive the camera's focus distance. So this data, so here's my start and my stop nodes they are being they are working together to create a distance value the distance value is going to feed into my focus distance attribute in addition to that we have a foc an f stop uh, that will allow us to basically focus the camera at a specific point so everything's not out of focus and everything's not in focus i can control that and then a scaling factor, which is called the focus region scale, which will allow me to fine tune that area uh, so I can increase the ability to focus at that distance. So it's like thinking of, I think of it as like concentric rings. I have a target, and then I can focus in on that. How much of that region do I want to have in focus? How much more of that region do I want to have in focus? So wherever the target is, it's based on the distance from the camera. And then how little amount from that point do I want to be in focus or how much do I want to be in focus? If I increase the focus region, more and more and more of that area can become in focus. So those are the things that I want to be uh, connecting and creating today. Okay, so that's an overview of the goal and the purpose and the application of it. Uh, so how do we go about doing this? Okay, so. I'm going to start with a fresh scene so I don't confuse myself. Uh, 
So here in my scene, I'm going to create a camera. And I'm going to call it depth of field cam. OK. I'm going to look at it from the side just to kind of get things organized for myself. I'm going to hide my grid. So here's my camera. I'm going to create a uh, measuring tool. And so go up to create, go to measuring tool distance. And when I do that, I have to click uh, here. I guess I'll bring my grid up for this. I'm going to click um, snap to the point. So here's a, the beginning and an end point of my scene. Okay, I'm going to hide my grid again. So here's my beginning and my end point. Wherever this end point is, that's the distance. So one of the things you want to do is open up your hyper uh, hypergraph and you can look and you can find those things. Uh, right, locator 1, locator 2. Okay. So those things are actually important. All right. This point, I'm going to snap, basically, I'm going to parent that because I want it to be exactly with the camera. So the camera itself is going to be, create a parent constraint to the locator, meaning wherever that locator is, it's going to be based on and receiving the information from the actual camera. So currently, if I select my locator, notice that my translate rotate attributes are blank. They're not connected to anything. There's no change. When I select the camera and I select the locator here, and I go into my animation menus and I go to constrain and I go to parent, and I'm going to choose my options box. I'm going to hit reset settings. And I'm going to choose Maintain Offset, and I'm going to uncheck that. And I'm going to hit Apply. When I do that, the locator is going to snap to the camera's actual uh, uh, point of uh, uh, basically where its rotation values are, its pivot point, and it snaps there. Wherever the camera goes now, that point is going to go with it. Notice that when I select the locator, this has become blue, indicating that it is receiving information from something else. If you go into your hyper, uh, hypergraph, and if I look at my locator, I have a constraint set up here, and it's telling me that the locator is constrained to this uh, camera. Now, this is by using my show input output attributes, so I can see this. The camera is constraining the locator. If I go back to my scene, I can see it look, looks like this. Okay. Now, the distance tool has a distance node that calculates the actual distance uh, of the two points. That's important because I need this to drive the actual uh, node, the shape node of my camera. My camera has shape node attributes down here and focus distance is one of them and I need that. So what I need to do now is connect the distance attribute. This needs to drive the camera's shape node attribute. So this is what we need to do. Go into our windows, general editors, connection editor. And this is going to allow me to choose one object and that's going to be my distance node. This, this is the object that is going to drive the information. This is where the information is coming from. It's the controlling object. And I need to find my uh, data for that. So I have to sift through here to find my distance uh, information. So let's see if I can find it. Sometimes it's hidden, and sometimes it is not super easy to find, but I want to look and see if I have it. And sometimes I want to make sure I have the right... This is my transform, so let me uh, choose my shape node. If I choose my shape node, so I have two nodes. Every object's got a transform node and a shape node. 
this is the one I need to load. I loaded the wrong one. Uh, and so here's my, I just lost it, um, over here on the side, distance attribute right there. That's what I want. Now I'm going to go into my camera, and I need the camera shape, not its, I need to get the camera's shape node uh, versus its transform node. So what I want to do now is load up here by choosing my uh, my shape node. I'm going to make sure I have my shape node. And I need to go down into my there's my focal length, focus distance. So I need to say this is going to drive my focus distance. I have to make sure I have the right nodes. Okay, so now if I move one of these things, if I have my camera here and I move this, my focus distance should match these values. So 5.62 is now matching my dis focus distance. So if I move my camera again, notice that it automatically updates. That's actually very important when you have to know how far the camera is away from the object you're trying to photograph. Okay, so that part's done. That's pretty much the hardest part. The next part is adding attributes. Uh, it's always nice when you select your camera to be able to have pretty quick at access to uh, f-stop values and the focal length values. So it's not that far away to, to manually add these, uh, uh, or it's not that far away to get into the shape node. But what I like to do is remove as many things from my controls as, as, I, ha as I need because I don't need the scale values of these so I can actually take these and hide them and then I can add um, I could add an f-stop value a focal length value and a uh, one of the ones that isn't here is the attribute for focus range uh, in my in my camera settings um, for my for my camera, my depth of field can. When I go to depth of field and I turn it on, I have to have a focus region scale, and I can add that. And so the next things I'm going to do is just add those, so they're just a little easier to get to.